Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In today's episode, David will be talking with Professor Simeon Simov of Western Sydney University. Professor Simov sits on the Artificial Intelligence and Ethics Committee at the ACS and is also the IFIP Australian Chair for the Global Technical Committee for Artificial Intelligence. Join David and Simeon as they discuss believability in AI, generative AI, symbolic AI, and decentralized artificial intelligence models. Professor Simeon Simov is a professor at Western Sydney University. He's an important contributor on the ACS, Artificial Intelligence and Ethics Committee, as an advisory member. And he's also the IFIP Australian Chair for the Global Technical Committee for Artificial Intelligence, that's TC12, in the world. He likes to promote visual analytics, insights, and discoveries about cognitive algorithms and believability in AI. Simeon, welcome to the program. Oh, thanks, David. Thank you. So from your perspective, what's the most important thing in terms of artificial intelligence to you right now? Oh, from, from uh, there are two things. I mean, from technical perspective, the most important is the development of the so-called marriage between the symbolic AI and the neuro AI. Uh, this is because, in my opinion, a, a lot of... Um, a lot of experience has been uh, developed in the symbolic AI and with the, the, uh, with the rapid movement of uh, generative AI, there, is, there are lots of opportunities uh, for, um, for um, new discoveries and new models and new technologies in that space. The second perspective is on the education of society, that, that, that to change the education and the perception towards AI in order to make it much, first of all, much more positive perception, but also to make uh, each citizen aware of how decision making happens with AI algorithms. Many people are surprised when they say, oh, but the algorithm is not that deterministic. Yes, of course, it is not. It is, uh, it can be, uh, uh, an AI model can be, uh, the decision making of an AI model can be shifted depending on the data on which it is trained. So let's let's talk about you know what is explainable AI, and and more importantly, what do you mean when you say it's important to understand about believability in AI? Yes, David, that's uh, uh, that's a uh, that's a great question. Uh, explainable AI is the capability of uh, AI to actually uh, of an AI algorithm to explain the output that it has produced. And it can be in, at a different depth. It can be at the depth of the algorithm. It can be just at the depth of the output. Believability has been kind of close to my um, my heart because, first of all, it is a psychological concept. In the early days, it was it was basically uh, promoted mostly on virtual environments and how believable are looking the avatars, the behavior of agents. So, like in Meta these days, but in the early virtual worlds, like uh, Second Life, uh, and so on. How visually believable were they? But there are many more uh, aspects of believability features, how they talk, how they reason, how they um, uh, co- collaborate, and so, and so on. Um, so this, this interaction, it, it's, it's mostly about agents, uh, agent-based AI. And uh, believability is um, uh, uh, it is the suspension of this belief that opposite to me is a, a, a representation of David. <laughs> in, the, in that case, I would say, well, it's 100% achieved believability. That's the example. So, uh, and to touch on the generative AI, I guess... We're seeing, we've seen large language models come about, but now we're seeing the emergence of VLMs, not LLMs, visual language models really starting to come to the fore. Yes, uh, it's, 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 it's a revolution. It's a revolution. And 
You know, Noam Chomsky in 2023 said it is not a, uh, we, sh we should stop calling it AI, AI. Uh, we should start calling it plagiarism software. Um, I, in some sense, uh, I can see the linguists, the, the, the rigid linguists, how they are looking at that. But on the other hand, there is a whole direction of um, emergency in complex systems and things that emerge that we cannot predict when we are designing these systems. And I would classify that behavior as a result of emergency of properties uh, that, uh, that we haven't predicted. Visual language, visual languages, I'm in general a visual person, and a visual, a visual, uh, the development of visual languages uh, in, in, that, uh, in that manner uh, will be, uh, as I said, it, it, is a, it is a really a revolution. Let's jump over to symbolic AI, because I know that it's been replaced in recent times by other conversations, but what are the important features about symbolic AI? Well, for me, symbolic AI is still aimed to find how, uh, how we reason, how human, uh, how human does the intelligence. As, <laughs> as uh, Steve Wozniak mentioned uh, in a recent sort of interview, uh, he said, well, I have uh, also AI. Uh, my AI is actual intelligence. <laughs> so, um, uh, and so, um, uh, symbolic, uh, symbolic AI has done a lot on the, in the area of knowledge representation, the way that knowledge is stored, organized, efficiently retrieved, and so on. And in my opinion, this can be the third uh, important uh, part of, the, uh, of, of your first question, is uh, connecting these uh, knowledge representation uh, methods, tools, um, models, and so on, with the neuro AI and uh, utilization of the knowledge that is extracted from the data. The model, this, this knowledge at the moment exists in neural models, just classifiers and uh, some sort of reinforcement learning models. I want to jump to another topic, which is in terms of uh, yesterday, the ACS hosted the um, uh, Blockchain Australia conference. And one of the themes was about decentralized systems. Let's touch on decentralized AI. What, what would a model of transparency look like if we were talking about decentralized AI? Yes, decentralized AI, is, in my opinion, is now emerging partially from the distributed AI area, like uh, multi-agent systems, uh, where basically AI is distributed among the agents and the decision in the system is made from the agent interaction. Uh, a decentralized AI has the opportunity to have, to operate with a consensus of the, on the data set that is used, consensus on the building blocks of the algorithms. Uh, that form the AI system, and, and a few other consensuses that are coming from the the, the concept of decentralized uh, systems, and in uh, in addition to that, of course, keeping the, the the valuable information on the nodes where the privacy is protected, and the algorithm just extracts whatever it needs to extract. So there are many many layers that are beneficial for 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 that. But in my opinion, the central, uh, the central concept is consensus, and that guarantees some transparency uh, in the sense that, okay, there is a consensus that, uh, uh, um, uh, that a data, among several nodes that the data set does not have any bias in terms of, set, let's say, racial bias. Then the model that is generated from that data set shouldn't have that bias. And that, that's what uh, the big thing of uh, decentralized uh, approach, in my opinion, is. At the high level, it is the consensus that keeps that. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, you, of course, you're a professor. You've had many, many years in education. So I know you're passionate about that. Um, but what is it that we need to make sure that people are educated in AI? Because... Um, I guess it's for some people, they're just going to want to use the tools and they're not worried about how they got there. But what is it about? Is it about explainability or is it something more than that? Yeah, that's, 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 a, that, that's a very important uh, moment now. Um, I've been for several years, uh, for actually for probably 15 years, uh, in different leadership roles. And in those leadership roles, I have different conversations about AI. 
uh, I mean, as a dean of a broader school uh, at the time, computing, engineering, and mathematics, we kind of spread the influence of computing across those disciplines. It was easy in the organiz- in a single organizational unit. Then becoming a pro vice chancellor of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, I sort of of STEM, I saw uh, the need of that uh, expansion in the area of science, because a lot of scientific discoveries can be now done by uh, computational methods, which involve AI. And in this sense, uh, I would say that at the different levels, whether even starting from uh, secondary education, uh, the um, understanding of the AI. AI is today's mathematics, I would say, the, the modern mathematics. That's what it, what, what it, what, how, how, uh, that's how it should be treated. Well, it's not the modern mathematics, but that's how it should be treated. It should be treated as important as the mat- mathematics is and has been in our education and including mathematics to a deeper level uh, in, in, in our education. Um, but really understanding the models how they operate, how they, the models of AI operate, because there is a lot of hype around. And, um, you know, now prompt engineering, for example, prompt engineering is a very interesting emerging area. And it's probably beca- comes more from the humanitarian perspective. And I have listened to uh, opinions that we should nurture AI and should uh, uh, sort of educate it as a kid. Uh, as a little kid, and 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 that we should love it, and we should start to believe it, and emotions are switched on, and etc. In my opinion, uh, the nature of the probabilistic models has to be spread uh, in single words uh, and as a basic uh, knowledge across uh, the society. Mm. Professor Simeon, thank you for your time today. Thanks, David. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook or on LinkedIn.